Hey guys, before the video starts, I just wanted to let you know that we're going to be doing a giveaway at the very end of this video, so make sure to watch all the way through if you want to know how to enter. Hey! What's up? Today, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be going through the last 10 seasons of Fortnite and finally explaining the entire storyline. While many channels have been able to simply explain the events in chronological order, today we aim to go much further than this. Today, we will be unraveling the long, complicated chain of events and finally putting all the pieces together to the truth of what has actually been happening to the island. While the events of Fortnite might seem like a chaotic, random mess, I assure you, it's not. The world of Fortnite is not as it seems, and finally, for the first time today, we will be showing you the true storyline. So, if we're going to begin properly, we need to jump all the way back to before the time of Battle Royale. In the beginning, there was a man named Dr. Vinderman. He was a groundbreaking scientist who was able to make huge advancements in technology. He owned a laboratory known as Vindertech Labs, which may sound familiar as the V in V-Buck stands for Vindertech. And it's also known that Dr. Vinderman is the creator of the Battle Pass, some of the weapons we see in the Battle Royale Island, loot llamas, and all those supply drops we see throughout the game. Now, some even go so far as to speculate that Dr. Vinderman created the Battle Royale Island itself, but that is unknown. Now, before chaos struck the island, things were actually quite peaceful. Well, for an island full of savages known for constantly killing one another, relatively peaceful for what was to come. Anyways, the island was initially quite underdeveloped, with lots of farmland and only a few major town hubs, including Pleasant Park, Salty Springs, and Retail Row. Over time, however, the island started to see massive improvements in industrialization, and most noteworthy, a city cropped up on the western hemisphere of the map called Tilt Towers. Things were fairly good for the people of the island until one day, something changed. A bright light emerged in the sky, which slowly, day by day, began to get bigger and brighter. Telescopes could be found all over the map looking towards the great mass in the sky, and the inhabitants were trying to figure out what it was. Eventually, a code from the sound waves of the mass was deciphered, and through spectrogram, it gave this image. Nice one, epic. Now, as time went on, the truth slowly began to reveal itself. Meteorites began falling from the sky, and the bright light was revealed to be a meteor bound for our island. And as the weeks followed, a Morse code message was picked up saying SOS D5418. The SOS was clear save our souls, and D5 was a coordinate on the Battle Royale map, which specifically had tilted towers in it. Now, this was either a cry for help from the inhabitants or a warning of what was to come. Whatever it was, though, the inhabitants were saved. Sort of. On May 1st, 2018, Season 4 of Fortnite began, and a giant meteor came crashing down to the island. This decimated the entire center of the map, and with it, both the factories of the island and Dusty Depot. Smaller meteorites had also landed around the map, destroying the building in Tilted Towers, the new drive-in theater, Risky Reels, and also the island's prison. I still wonder if perhaps anyone had actually escaped from this prison. More interestingly, though, was what was found in the newly named Dusty Divot. Magic rocks, known as Hop Rocks, filled the crater and, when consumed, gave the user anti-gravity abilities. This this was something completely foreign to this world. Even stranger though, was in the center of the giant crater lay a tiny, impenetrable rock. And not long after, a perimeter and science facility popped up around the strange meteorite. Now, at first glance, it seems obvious enough that the perimeter had been set up around the rock as a safety measure. Clearly, the government wanted to keep a quarantine on the rock as it was deemed an unknown and potential threat. This, we will come to find out, is actually not the case at all. At least, not likely. Interestingly, however, during this time, a movie about superheroes was being filmed around the map. A superhero mansion and villain base complete with rockets and all had been set up at the opposite ends of the map. Which is odd, doesn't it seem? You would think an island that just faced total annihilation would be so quick to move on and start making movies. Surely their resources could be put into rebuilding their devastated homes instead of a movie set. Now, all these peculiarities point to one 
group. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is our first look into the mysterious organization, which for the rest of this video, I will refer to as Organization X. This is one of the guiding hands, which we will see time and time again work to change the map. To this day, we know very little about this organization, but they have single-handedly had one of the biggest impacts on the island as we know. Many people believe that it is a government agency, but others propose something much different. Their motives, as we will show throughout the rest of the video, seem to actually be quite sinister. They do not seem to be a helping hand, but rather an organization bent on power, seeking the mysteries of what lay below the lake. Now, from what we know, it seems very probable that they are the ones who fronted the cost of the movie as an excuse to set up a prop rocket base, except that rocket would prove to be all too real. Now, as the days passed, Hop Rocks were starting to get cleaned up around the map. At first, it seemed like they were being transported away to safety, but we would soon learn that they were being taken to the rocket base by an ominous set of vehicles. The giant rock and dusty divot was another story, though. Very little progress was being made to discover its secrets. As the days turned to weeks, hope was dwindling until one day the rock broke apart, revealing a life support pod. Out of it emerged an alien who would come to be known as the Visitor. A good question to ask is, was it the Visitor who orchestrated the cleanup of the Hop Rocks, and also, did he create the rocket? While it is possible, I suspect it was the work of Organization X. The vehicles are ones we will see over and over again, and it's very hard to explain how the Visitor could have access to the vehicles or even staff to drive the trucks. Furthermore, he was still encased in the rock when the rocket was created. So no, it actually seems more likely that Organization X was the cause of the cleanup. We must then wonder why on earth they would be sending these rocks to what was supposedly a movie set. Again, all the evidence points to the entire film being a facade for something far more terrible. Now we don't know how, but the visitor learned how to hack the rocket right under the nose of Organization X and prepare it to launch. This is believable enough, as he's clearly from another world, so I would suspect he would have some crazy technologies to be able to do this. Interestingly enough though, he set warnings on all the TVs and even gave a timer countdown to when it would launch. For someone who had been deemed an alien villain, it seems pretty kind. Now on launch day, the rocket flew up high into the sky, but then suddenly took a turn back down towards the map. Just before it struck Tilted Towers, a rift in time and space opened, sending the rocket away and then back again. The rocket flew aggressively around the map until it exited the island world entirely, leaving behind a great rift in the sky. So the question then begs to be asked, was the visitor trying to destroy our world? No, it seems like he was only trying to get it. Home. The rocket was clearly meant to launch straight up, away from the island, and he had even given a warning to the residents when it would launch. Only at the last minute did the rocket falter. And at that moment, it looks like it must have been retaken over by the original creators of the rocket, probably Organization X. Perhaps, very likely, they were trying to destroy the map in search of what lay below it. But using the vast power of the Hop Rocks, which we now know to contain zero point energy related to the vaults and giant sphere, the visitor was able to send the rocket away through a rift, saving our island at a huge cost. It opened a rift between dimensions, which would have monumental ramifications for us all. As for the visitor, in a sad twist of fate, it seems like one of the biggest villains in the Fortnite timeline may have actually been our biggest hero. He sacrificed himself to another universe so that we could go on living. Now, despite salvation, things were not about to get any better. Upon the introduction of the rift, weird things started being transported into the map. Started with anchors and dinosaur bones, and eventually an entire desert, golf course, and Viking ship rifted into the map. This then led to the penultimate event of season five, which was a giant cube that spawned into the desert. It was huge, deadly purple, and nobody knew where it came from. Now, some suggest that it was sent from the realm that received our rocket in a vengeful attempt to destroy us, and others think it may have just been another coincidental accident like the Viking ship. 
All we know for sure is that it would become another huge repercussion from the single stroke of a butterfly's wing. Though the cube first appeared to be a stationary object, it began to move at a rate of one flip every hour and 43 minutes. During its journey around the map, the cube printed seven runes with anti-gravity domes surrounding it. The cube then proceeded into Loot Lake and dissolved, turning the lake into a purple bounce pad with properties akin to the cube itself. But at the beginning of season six, the cube was revealed to still be intact, floating the Loot Lake Island up into the sky. There was certainly though a mysterious energy connected to this location, which it seems like the cube may have been after. The cube, patient enough however, then proceeded to travel to each rune it had created on the map, powering it up, preparing for a zombie apocalypse. The cube then returned to the center of Loot Lake where it let out a beam of light, covering the map in darkness and putting husk towers all across the map. These would spawn zombies or husks, which the residents of the island had to battle for five long days. But on the dawn of the sixth day, we were saved. The cube began to spin until it exploded, destroying the husk spawners and giving us our first look into the in-between. At the time, the butterfly event was very confusing, but knowing what we know now can actually be explained very easily. At first glance of the butterfly event, it seemed to us like the cube just decided to blow up. That, however, is not the case. It seems as though the cube was sent to the island to harvest whatever was below the lake. This spot, which we now know to be the zero point, was extremely sought after. The cube spawned the husks to deal with the island inhabitants and maybe even Thord Organization X while it tried to extract the energy that lay below it. We then found out that this realm below the cube was the in-between, the light realm of our universe, which was home to both the Valth and a dear friend named Singularity. Fortunately for us, however, the cube was defeated. The cube did not go willingly, but rather it was destroyed, shattered into many pieces and scattered across the island. Using the power of the Light Realm and the Nexus Orb, Singularity single-handedly destroyed the dark power of the cube, restoring the world to balance. And interestingly enough, at the time, she chose not to show her face, but rather presented herself as a simple butterfly. At this point, she knew we were not ready for her secrets. Now, shortly after the butterfly event, a mysterious parachute was found at Flush Factory. Sightings of a robot could be seen in several different loading screens, and it seems that this robot, known as AIM, was studying us. He was learning our behavior and preparing for an upcoming invasion. Now, at around the same time, a white mass could be seen approaching the island until the start of Season 7 when it came crashing in. A full-scale invasion was being carried out on the island by a man named Sergeant Winter. What was he after? Now, Sergeant Winter's island came with much more than just a few new points of interest. His island was also home to a frozen mountain which slowly melted, revealing a dangerous secret. It was the home of the Ice King. His castle housed all of the wonders, including a magical sword, dragon eggs, and a mysterious chunk of ice hidden in the dungeons. But let's get back to Sergeant Winter for a second. Now, it's still unknown whether Sergeant Winter acted as a servant to the Ice King or truly thought that he would be the one to retrieve and control the energy of the cube for himself. His name is Sergeant, which kind of suggests that he's simply a military commander and not the highest order leader of whatever organization he belongs to. But the opposite is just as likely. Regardless though, it seems like the Ice King came here intentionally as well. Sergeant Winter may not have even known that he was bringing the Ice King here, but there is no doubt in my mind that the Ice King had a guiding hand in all of this. Now what's for certain is the Ice King was after the energy of the cube, and possibly maybe even something more powerful. Though shattered, pieces of the cube still remained on the island, and he sought to harness their energy. As the weeks went by, his servants, how you gotta do that to me, Trog? His servants slowly collected pieces of the cube until he was ready to attack the island himself. He floated above his castle in a magical ball, performing dark magic with fragments of the cube. But as this was going on, deep under the castle in the dungeons, the ice was melting. Now, it had been melting for some time now, but this was different. It seemed as though something or someone was chained and frozen in the ice. Perhaps the heat of the island was too hot for the Ice King's spells, or perhaps what was in the ice was just too strong. Finally, though, the Ice King was ready. In a grand show, he once again unleashed the power of the cube, creating the Long Night. 
Covered in snow and ice husks, the island was thrown into darkness. While everyone was focused on fighting for their lives, the island was now his to control. If he was after what lay below Loot Lake, surely no one would oppose him now. Who could save us? Singularity? No, not this time. Though powerful, the Ice King had made one fatal error. The island was too hot. He had brought with him his arch nemesis, who we know as the Prisoner. The Prisoner matched the Ice King in power, so the Ice King could never have left him far off in his distant home. The only way the Ice King could control the Prisoner was to bring him to our island, bound under ice magic and chains. The Ice King was not able to act fast enough, and the magic that binded the Prisoner wore off. He escaped, stealing the key to his imprisonment, his dragon eggs, and then performed fire magic to return himself to his original state, the King of Flame. In one giant turn of events, the prisoner ended our long night of ice and death and concluded the short reign of the Ice King. But the prisoner was not done yet, and he certainly wasn't on our side. He went deep into the core of the earth below Wailing Woods and brought about a giant volcano. Whatever the Ice King was after, it seemed that the prisoner might have wanted it too. He then hatched his ninja dragon hatchlings known as hybrids and set off to defeat the Ice King. Also at the same time, a ghost pirate reached the island to search after the same thing, and he literally did nothing, only serving to introduce the season eight battle pass. So let's just make a story more exciting and pretend that he was killed by the prisoner or something, because he probably has the most useless plot in the entire story. Anyways, while the events of the last few seasons had been going on, Organization X was still on the move. They'd been spotted in helicopters all over the map, searching for something. A hole had been dug at the remains of the Dusty Divot impact site where the visitor had originally landed. Another one sprouted up just next to Loot Lake, and finally, whatever they had been searching for was found. An excavation at the center of Loot Lake was conducted, and the island's biggest secret was finally revealed. Beneath Loot Lake lay a mysterious vault. After all this time, the catalyst of the cube, rockets, and maybe even the Ice King and Meteor was shown to us. Organization X quickly got underway trying to access the vault, and on May 4th, 2019, they succeeded. They successfully opened us to another world, the In-Between. In it, they found vaulted weapons, a mysterious mask, and a giant glowing sphere. Was this the energy that so many people had been after for so long? Who did the mask belong to? We would all find out soon enough. Now, as quickly as we entered the vault, we were also pushed back out of it, back into our realm we had stepped too far. The vault contained powerful energy, and in releasing us, it also released a giant wave of energy which rattled the map to its core. This set off a chain reaction, resulting in the eruption of the prisoner's volcano. Magma spewed up into the air, destroying Retail Road, Tilted Towers, and almost entirely finished off the castle of Polar Peak. Now, for all we know, the eruption could have been planned by the prisoner as a way to kill the Ice King, but the prisoner and Ice King storyline almost entirely end here, so it's hard to say for sure. But let's get back to the vault and what really happened. Because after this, we see a lot of time pass before season nine. While previously we only had the perspective of Jonesy and Peely hiding in the bunker, it's now quite clear as to what happened between the end of season eight and beginning of season nine. After the invaulting event, Singularity realized her secrets were no more. The power and mystery that had been so long tried to stay hidden had been revealed. Singularity had been acting behind the scenes for so long as a savior, or at least neutral friend, but with Organization X gaining knowledge and power and even more danger lurking, she realized it was time to act. The state of the vault and island were weaker and more vulnerable than they had ever been after the volcano, so she did the only thing she could do. She revealed her secrets to the world, giving them huge advancements in technology and also providing energy from her vault to power their newfound world. Tilted and Retail were rebuilt in extraordinary ways and a monument was erected in Neil Tilted in honor of her saving the island. But Singularity did not share all of her secrets. She seemingly gave the inhabitants just enough information so that they could rebuild better than before, odd, and then stop asking questions. She didn't want us to become powerful though. In truth, what she was really doing was taking a more offensive route for herself. She made it seem like she was helping us by setting up all these new things, but really, this was all in an effort to continue the protection of the vault. Instead of hiding, she was setting up safety measures all over the map. 
there were still some secrets to be kept, and she certainly had a few more tricks up her sleeve. Now, things seemed pretty okay for a while. The world was finally getting back to normal, but then chaos poked its ugly head up once again. Polar Peak had continued to crack, revealing a gigantic frozen eye in the ice. An eye that big could only belong to a monster of even larger proportions. As weeks passed, whatever was underneath Polar Peak escaped, and it went on a rampage, wreaking havoc on the citizens of the island and almost destroying the power cord to Neil Tilted. The question begs to be asked, though. Was this an unfortunate mishap or another deliberate act to gain access to the power of the vault? Perhaps the monster had been intentionally brought by the Ice King as a plan B in case he was defeated. Perhaps the prisoner wished destruction on the island as well. Most believably, if anything, it was probably once again Organization X. This would make sense, in my opinion. Just as they were so close to gaining the power of the vault, they were defeated. Perhaps after the volcano eruption revealed life beneath Polar Peak, they began digging. And upon finding this monster, perhaps they chose to set it off on the island in an attempt to again weaken Singularity and the protection of the vault. Regardless of who set the monster loose, one thing was certain. Singularity intended to kill it. A monster so large was a huge threat to her survival, and it was time to play one of her cards the secrets of the pressure plant. But the pressure plant was in fact not quite a pressure plant at all, but instead it housed a secret facility. Singularity had installed the factory as a safety measure and the time to utilize it was now. Over the weeks, she conducted the creation of a giant mechanical robot. And just as the robot was finished, the monster chose to attack the island again. This time going, you guessed it, straight for the vault. It seems a little peculiar, doesn't it? Fortunately though, the robot countered the attack, sending Hellfire missiles at it, slowing it down, but hardly landing a scratch. The monster then retaliated with a giant green blazer beam, severely weakening the robot. The robot, countering again, then jet tackled the monster into the ocean for what was seemingly a victory. But with his back turned, the monster jumped from the ocean, pinning the robot, severely damaging it, and ripping off its arm. Things looked grim for Singularity. In a last-ditch effort, she used the robot to destroy the entrance to the vault, and from it, she pulled the Nexus Sphere. This was our first look into the power of the mystical orb, which contained zero-point energy. Supercharged, the robot threw a decimating punch, sending the monster back and giving Singularity a moment to act. This was her final trick and the ace that she had been hiding in her sleeve. Charging towards Neo Tilted, she grabbed her own statue and from it pulled a giant sword, which had been hiding under our noses the whole time. In a final attack, she thrust the sword into the monster's head, defeating it once and for all. Damaged and without a vault to defend anymore, Singularity flew away in her robot. Was this the end to our dear friend? Unfortunately, we didn't have time to think about that. The vault was damaged, and outside it lay the Nexus Sphere. What had been defended for nine long seasons was now out in the open and vulnerable. The sphere was not meant for this realm, and it showed. As days passed, the sphere began to glow and flicker, becoming more unstable by the day. On August 1st, Season 10 began, and with it, the map was changed to its very core. The Zero Point Sphere exploded, sending the island and an unfortunate Jonesy into the fourth dimension. In it, moments from every single season and timeline emerged into one insane void. The cube, rocket, butterfly, and even an angry Peely were all in the same place at once. It was a paradox. But then suddenly the orb sucked everything back to our island. Sort of. Because things were back, but kind of different. There was a flush factory outlet on top of the mountain. A tiny Risky Reels movie theater had been set up in the jungle. And the sign for Paradise Palms looked a lot more like Moisty Mire. Not only that, but Dusty Depot and the original factories had been returned to their original state. But above it lay its initial destroyer the meteor. See, our map merged with different timelines to create something similar to the map we knew, but also entirely different. And not only that, but it seems like time has been altered, slowed down, or maybe even paused. The meteor looms above the map moments before it struck it, all the way back at the beginning of season four, but it moves nowheres, paused in thin air moments before Armageddon. 
And this is where the storyline leaves us. In 10 seasons, it seems like we have now almost gone entirely full circle. And it seems like now our mission is to try and save the island before the meteor strikes again. What's even more interesting though is with the meteor paused, it seems like the visitor has already escaped from his pod. What could he possibly be doing? The rocket's gone. Perhaps he'll try to get the rocket out of that fourth dimensional void and ride it home, or perhaps he's got other plans. What is Organization X going to do about this? The Zero Point Spear still lies at the middle of Loot Lake. Perhaps they're going to try to tame it. And lastly, where is Singularity? She left not only her vault, but also the orb laying in plain sight. For what? Has she gone to get help to save us from our inevitable fate again, or is she truly gone? Time will only tell, ladies and gentlemen, but that is the storyline as far as we know it today. And regardless of all that, one thing is for sure. We have to stop the meteor. Anyways, thank you guys so much for listening to this video all the way through. Now, I did just want to quickly get to the giveaway, which we're currently running on the channel. For season 10, we decided to give away 10 battle pass codes to 10 of you guys, and we still have four left. If you are interested in entering the giveaway on this video, all you have to do is be a subscriber, and then down below in four sentences or less, comment what you think is going to happen in season 10. And two of you will be picked to win the battle pass. Anyways, thank you guys once again for listening all the way through this video. It was a lot of fun to make, a little bit of a bigger project than normal, but uh, I like doing this, so maybe we can do it again for season 11 or 12. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you very much, and I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.